Space War, an epic battle for the future of whatever fantasy world you're currently inhabiting. A tightly contested football match between some cars. Every day gamers find themselves engaged in battles fraught with danger and epic in scale. But there's one battle that transcends the entire medium of video games. A battle that rages pretty much every night with a fallout that lasts well into the following morning. Shall I do what I know I should and go to bed? Or should I have just one more game? We touched upon this never-ending mind war between Nighttime You and Next Morning You in seven arguments every gamer has had at least once, but feel the games that sparked the debate most strongly deserve a video all to themselves. And that's the video you're watching right now. Seven mega-addictive video games you can't stop playing until at least 4am. We say at least because with our first entry, Destruction Derby meets FIFA mashup Rocket League, it's entirely possible to find yourself playing right through the night and well into the following morning. Oh god. Cue the hastily put together text to your boss about how ill you are. Rob says he's had a dodgy Chinese and he's not going to come in today. The day after having a dodgy Mexican. And the solemn promise to yourself that you'll never ever stay up that late playing video games again. It's easy to see why Rocket League makes our list, it's insanely simple for starters. Drive a car into a beach ball and make it go in the goal. Do this more than your opponents, win. But it's that kind of clean, easy fun that makes Rocket League so playable. Every game you play makes you a little bit better. You'll unlock cooler stuff for your motor, you'll score outrageous goals, feel compelled to avenge cruel defeats, and form a messy Neymar Suarez like like bond with your teammates. And each game only lasts five minutes, so, you know. One more? Yep. Next up, we've got Destiny, a game that slurps up your life hours like a giant time-sucking vacuum cleaner. If you're in on Destiny, you'll know exactly what I mean. There's always one more little thing you can do before hitting the sack. The game cleverly structures itself so fun can be picked at varying lengths, from a menu that acts as a sort of enjoyment vending machine. The daily? That'll be 20 minutes, please. The weekly strike? Give it an hour hour or so just to be safe? Oh, you want Prison of Elders, do you? Three hours, please. The fact Destiny is so easily digestible makes it perfect if you've only got a spare 30 minutes or so. You could grind for some relic iron or have a quick round of control in the crucible. And then the nightfall wouldn't hurt, would it? We'll blast through it quickly. And then we should probably just head to the tower to decode those engrams we got, and then a few more rounds of crucible to test out the new weapon, and then just a few bounties because it's nearly leveled up now, and then just one more on my god, it's four in the morning, I've got a meeting in five hours. It's the loot that does it, small nuggets of reward sprinkled regularly into the pond of progression, and like eager gaming goldfish we circle, waiting to gobble them up. And the next game on our list is the undisputed loot master, Diablo 3. Is there anything more rewarding in life than setting out on a massive adventure, a mewling level one baby, weak and naked, and slowly, inexorably grinding your way to ultimate power? No is the answer, and hacking, slashing and looting your way through Diablo 3 is satisfying like licking chocolate icing out of a bowl, only the icing is sweet loot and every lick makes you more powerful. There's something about the grind, isn't there? It hurts, but it's a pain that tells you, yes, you're doing it. You're getting stronger. The fact you can get better loot by playing with others and bumping up the difficulty level gives Diablo 3 even more of a hook, and that's where it catches you. It rewards hard work and exploration, feeding you more and more power. Dig in, embrace the grind. The next loot drop might be amazing, and that's when you realise A, you've been playing for 10 hours straight, and B, you don't care. What's in the next chest?
We had a hard time choosing our next entry, which is basically all about big open world fantasy RPGs that throw more quests at you than they do square miles of beautifully rendered countryside. Skyrim, Dragon Age Inquisition, The Witcher 3. I've been guilty of playing all three well into the small hours just so I can complete one more quest or gain just one more level. You stayed up until 5am in Skyrim's character creator trying to make Khajiit look like a badger. Well, that was a complete waste of time, wasn't it? Anyway, I settled on gorgeous MMO and my personal game of forever Final Fantasy XIV for this next entry for a very specific reason. And it's this. The problem with planet dwarfing fantasy RPGs and their myriad quests is that to stop playing them you have to reach a point where it feels okay to stop and go to bed. You can't simply quit in the middle of a quest, it's just not good RPG etiquette. Similarly, if you're close to levelling up you have to murder a couple more small fry mobs just to topple yourself over the threshold. But my main problem with Final Fantasy XIV is that I've sort of developed developed this ridiculous habit whereby my dungeon raiding paladin Reberis Targaryen has to go to bed inside the actual game before I can log off and go to real life bed. And to do that I have to clear all current side quests, Reberis can't go to bed with a clogged up journal, and also he has to take his armour off because, you know, sleeping in all of that would be preposterous. It takes me about 90 minutes to get ready for bed in Final Fantasy XIV, which is approximately 89 more minutes than it takes me in real life. One more quest, one more level, one more entry on my hunting log. I'm wrapped in your never-ending MMO embrace, Final Fantasy XIV. Never let me go. Remember about five minutes ago when we talked about Football But With Cars Simulator Rocket League? Well, it turns out Football But With Actual Football is equally addictive, especially when it's the actual football of FIFA 15 and its various modes of cheeky go on have another go gameplay. It's career mode that does it for me. I like to create a player who looks like me but with more hair and who's approximately 1,760 times better at football, stick him in the palace first team and bust the Premier League Golden Boot Race wide open. Naturally, this means I'm in a constant state of just one more game obsession. If Palace win and Roberto Piazzoni scores, then I have to play again because momentum is with me and momentum is crucial in football. But then if I lose, I also have to play again because I can't quit the game on a defeat as I'd then be in bed all night seething about it. There's another thing in FIFA as well, isn't there, with the packs. The packs and the cards that you can trade. Dave plays it a bit, I think. Ah! Ronaldo! 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 Ah! Yes! Yes! I've won FIFA. Can't remember what it's called. We're in dangerous territory with our final two entries. Firstly, because they both feature gameplay conducive to completely forgetting that time is even a thing that exists. And secondly, they're both on PS Vita, which means you can play them in bed and therefore lie to yourself and pretend you're getting an early night. First up, Oli Oli 2, welcome to Hollywood. Welcome to No Sleepville, more like. Population, everyone who's played the game ever. It's amazingly slick, wonderfully fast and relentlessly playable, allowing you to restart at the tap of a button and therefore gloss over any mistakes with stupidly amazing combos. It's a series of ultra cool moments, each flip, trick and grind, a blazing millisecond of brilliance. The problem with blazing milliseconds though is that when you add hundreds of thousands of them together you still get blazing seven hours. Honourable mentions to the likes of Hotline Miami and Trials Fusion here, two other games that entice you with instant restarts and reward you with intense flashy wonderment practically all the time. Slow burners these are not, but Oli Oli 2 makes the grade because there's always something extra you can do. Beat that score, do it faster, chuck in some revert manuals, make every landing perfect, now do it on pro, now unlock rad mode, now go to bed. <laughs> Joking. You can't go to sleep yet because we've got one more game left now. 
I don't think I've actually mentioned this title in a Friday feature before because uh, what this game did to me was so intense that I try not to talk about it. Persona 4 Golden. I'll never forgive you. Yes, yes, so you're one of the best JRPGs ever made and you've got a soundtrack that made my ears cry waxy tears of delight. But please, can I sleep now? What's that Persona 4? If I just make some envelopes, my diligence will increase. Well, why didn't you say so? Persona 4's genius lies in the fact it divides your in-game time into days. You go to school, you learn new skills, you form relationships with your classmates, you save people from a mysterious enemy who murders them by sucking them into a television. The crux being you'll always find yourself wanting to play just one more day. Just one more. I mean, they only take about 10 real life minutes so another one won't hurt. It also doesn't help that Persona 4 has one of the most intriguing plot lines in any game I've played and a cast so rich and likeable you end up feeling slightly deflated when you put down the PS Vita and realise they're not your actual friends. The solution being of course to not put the PS Vita down and just keep playing Persona 4 forever. After I've sent a little text of course. Hi Nathan. Eight dodgy Indian. There we go, seven video games you can't stop playing until at least 4am. Let us know in the comments which of these had you staying up all hours, and indeed if there are any you think we've missed out. Leave us a like too, because that's only polite, and subscribe for more of these videos every Friday. Thanks for watching.